speaker in a friend. She is an expert in uh, talent and sustainability. She is the author, the coach, executive, a teacher in human behavior, a consultant in high administration, executive potential, creativity processes, and innovation. She's going to talk to us about sustainable talent, a key element that is uh, found in human beings and only in human beings, and which is the key and the main axis of sustainability. Christina, it's a great uh, pleasure to have you here. I would like to thank you for your contribution to the Global Forum. In addition to the personal uh, contribution, everything that you did to uh, help us advertise this event with all the academic uh, units in Latin America. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And now you have the floor. Thank you, Marga. It's a great pleasure to be here in this conference with you, friends, so dear friends in Curitiba. Yepi, Sezi, and all their respective teams. It's always a great honor to work with you. Well, good morning, good afternoon for those who are uh, after midday, and good evening for those who are uh, at a later time zone. I asked my team at some point. I said that we should uh, justify why in a full day uh, on sustainable development we should talk about sustainable talent. The real reason for this conference today is sustain sustainable education. And we will use this uh, area to talk about people's talents. I think it's very important to start this conference and to start talking to you about these topics. It's very important to answer this question. Sustainable education implies many challenges, many changes that perhaps will have to be made, and not always will they be connected to sustainable talent. Actually, historically speaking, Universities, schools, uh, graduate courses, master courses, companies, uh, performance evaluations have seeked to find in people that which we don't do well. Historically, from the day we leave kindergarten, uh, they're looking for things that we don't do well. And uh, what we can do so that a person who's not skilled in math, for example, be good, be excellent. I'm going to talk about a totally different concept, totally different from that. I'm not going to say, well, I'm going to wash my hands about the things that I'm not talented for, I'm naturally gifted to do. But I'm going to talk about what we can do with natural talents, especially during education. In order to broach this topic, it's important to take into consideration that one cannot generalize in terms of talents. Each person is unique. Each human being, as uh, the famous uh, short story by Galeano says is a little fire. Some are brighter, some is less bright, some are higher, other ones are lower flames. But each little fire is different. We cannot compare two uh, flames in two days or in two different points of time. So I created a short definition so I'm talking about uh, slide number three. 
Well, I ask the question, what is sustainable talent? Sustainable talent is to become what one already is. And this is something I borrowed from Dr. Spranger, who made this sentence very well known in the 30s, 1930s. So to become what you already are. The first inconvenient we find is that in most of us, we have a lot of difficulty to find out who we are. So how am I going to become that who I am if I don't know really well who I am? But now the youngsters and even uh, adults are running into crisis, vocational crisis. I want to change. I want to do something else, but I don't know what. Because usually we value more the context, the surroundings, some uh, things that are imposed by the family or the history or sometimes social obligations. I have to do so and so because otherwise I'm not going to be well seen. I've got to be a doctor, otherwise my father would be offended. So we have all these uh, circumstances which preclude us from being those who we are or to know who we are and then to convert ourselves into who we are. Therefore, what I'm going to try and do during this talk, these uh, moments we have together, is to define some terms which are in this transparency that I we showed uh, you before, which will enable us to reach to the end of this conference. I also talk to my husband. I usually talk a lot with my husband when I'm preparing a conference because usually I get uh, bored with the things that I do, so I don't do them always right, always the same way. I like to innovate. I like to talk about the new. And uh, so at home, too, I do that. So when I talk to uh, my husband, I said, I was going to uh, give this talk today. My husband, who's uh, a writer, a poet, and is into theater and all, he's a theater director, um, he's talked about talent, you know, uh, someone. There was this uh, writer, this playwright, uh, and there was this work by Agustin, which um, says the central forward died in the morning. Center forward uh, it would be the midfielder, perhaps. Uh, I don't know if uh, this position in soccer still exists, but it is a position of a soccer player in the uh, soccer field. So this uh, work by Agustin Gutani, if you look for it in Google, you're going to see that uh, this play is uh, being uh, shown or is on in several parts of the world, in a uh, small theater, an educational theater somewhere, but uh, there are, it is being uh, represented uh, in many parts of the world. So it is a uh, play in three acts. In the first act, you have a uh, t person who doesn't work, who's in uh, the uh, in a square, and uh, he comes into a book. He bumps into a book, and then he says, uh, "The policeman says, hey, you have to leave uh, here because an execution uh, is about to occur.'" And so he goes. Uh, this uh, tramp goes and he says uh, to the audience what uh, he's reading. So he says that in this uh, soccer club, now well, a soccer club, there was this soccer player called named Cachito, Cachito Garibaldi. He was very impressive. He was well known all over the world for the quality of his game, for his passion, for his technique. So the best soccer player at that moment. Well, there was this man called Lupus, and uh, the name is not by chance. 
lupus in Latin means wolf, and um, he he's very good at using these uh, tricky things in his plays. So Mr. Lupus, a millionaire, um, also a collectionist, would uh, collect human beings as well. Not just any human being, but special human beings, exceptional human beings. So what does he do? He uses his economic might so that this uh, soccer club will go bankrupt, and then uh, he can get Catito. And then Catito is bought uh, in those days for one million dollars. And then he arrives at Lupus's house, a huge mansion full of the best pleasures, uh, and uh, he's uh, welcomed by Lupus, and Lupus says uh, many things to him, communicates to him that he won't be able to leave the house, he won't be able to play soccer because uh, Mr. Lupus is very much afraid that he will get hurt by playing, and uh, he's going to be surrounded by other talents that he had already bought uh, before, a famous ballet uh, dancer uh, from ballet and um, other important characters, and many other important characters. So Catito starts living there, and then on the weekend he says, I want to visit my family. Catito was uh, very fond of his family, his nephews, his uh, brothers and sisters. And, and then uh, Mr. Lupus said, well, I said you wouldn't be able to leave the house. I thought it was only for the week. No, even the weekends, you cannot leave the house. And then he starts talking to all the characters. And then he uh, falls in love with Nora Rodrigova, the uh, dancer, the ballet dancer. And Mr. Lupus had already thought about uh, getting them together so that they would have babies, babies from this very famous ballet dancer and the soccer player. But Nora and Cachito are so much in love that they uh, plan to escape. They don't want to stay in that uh, state of uh, imprisonment. So one day they're trying to escape the mansion, which is not really a nice place, but a prison for them. And they trap them because in the middle of this uh, trying to 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 uh, run away, Mr. Westphalen uh, wants uh, to to always uh, escape, and then uh, they all find out. And Mr. Lupus is, is very angry. He asks them what they are doing, and he said, "Well, I won't allow you." to have uh, children. You're going, uh, and he imposes that the dancer will have children with uh, the monkey man, with King Kong. And Catito gets very angry at what uh, Mr. Lupus is doing, and so he kills him. He kills his owner. He is uh, sent to prison, and uh, he goes to jail. And the policeman who had told the tramp to leave the square because an execution was about to occur. This was the execution, the execution of Catito Garibaldi, who was going to uh, be, was going to die then. And then uh, the work, uh, the, the end is very interesting, talks about the talents, uh, about the fact that he did what he uh, loved, that he was in love with Nora, he was in love with soccer, and that he loved his family. And that being in this prison, in this jail where he was, he was not the one who uh, he used to be, because he was not where he wanted to be. He was not among the things that uh, gave him pleasure. Well, why did I tell you uh, all about this play so tragic, with such a tragic end where both of them die? Well, I told you because it shows several of the aspects that we want to tackle here. The first one is talent. We all can have talents. Periodically, when I uh, give talks in Curitiba, when I tell my own story, when I tell my audience that for 10 years I worked for finance and then one day I said, I'm, I don't like this. 
this is uh, the story of many people. And uh, this is the story that uh, was starting with Gatito. They wanted him to have other talents and not his own talents. So what is talent? Talent, for example, a successful, a talented soccer player knows the rules, does things right. Uh, does it necessarily mean to be exceptional? Not always. Oftentimes, being talented is not more nor less than having